if you're after a budget car, the TB Hyundai Gets is definitely going to be on your radar. It occupies the lower echelon of the market, starting from $2,000 going all the way up to $9,000. But should you buy one? Should you buy one of these cars? They sold very well when they were new, and there's plenty of parts for them, and they're cheap to buy and cheap to run. So you think it's a good car to buy? Well, it is, but there are a few things you need to go and look for when you're going to look for a TB Hyundai Gets. Firstly, turn the engine on. Does it make a ticking noise? If it does, it's probably the hydraulic lifters. It's a very easy fix. It's actually a DIY fix, but it's something you need to consider doing because if the lifters are wrong, it'll lead to greater engine damage later on down the line. So if you hear this tick, make sure you notify the seller. Also, you can fix it yourself with just two quarts of oil and holding the accelerator pedal between two and two and a half thousand RPM for about 30 to 40 minutes and it should clean itself out. So it's no expensive pull the engine apart job like many cars hydraulic lifters are, but it's something you need to consider doing. Other things to look for are premature suspension wear and CV boot wear. This is on cars that have been driven over very rough roads. These parts can wear out relatively quickly, particularly look at the front lower control arms and the CV boots, see if there's any grease coming out of the CV boots and look for worn bushes on the front control arms. Also to look for with this car is check the service history on the car. One thing with Getz's are many were bought by fleets and rental companies originally and when they were sold off, some dodgy individuals like to wind their odometers back. So if it hasn't got much history in the first five years and the car looks suspiciously worn, there's a reasonable chance it's had a haircut. When checking the CVs, make sure the car doesn't clunk when you turn left or right. That's probably a busted drive shaft. Again, not the end of the world, pretty easy to fix, but it's got to be done. And that record on about $300 to $500, depending on how much work has to be done around that area, including CVs and drive shaft. But parts are cheap, so if anything happens to the gets, it should be easy to fix. Same can be said for the rear suspension. Now, the rear suspension on the gets is a pretty simple torsion beam setup, so just make sure the shocks are in good shape. And if they look like they're leaking, again, not an expensive fix. New shock is $119, pair of them about $240 and fitting them is another 100 to 200 dollars so again it's not the end of the world but something you've got to do one thing you have to make sure with the gets is that the car that you're looking at hasn't had any major structural damage now minor damage is pretty easy to fix on them as we did with our car minor door is very easy to fix it's all bolt-on parts but look in the rear and look at the front pay particular attention under the boot so pull the carpet up where the spare tire is and look for signs of rear end damage. A lot of these cars, when they have rear end damage, that damage continues into the boot because it's a very small car and it's a hatchback. Same deal with the front. Always look for signs of damage. Now, the front panel is a plastic, so the front cross member is all plastic, so it's hard to tell if it's been replaced. Mostly look for bird screws and bolts that aren't quite in line and also mismatching panel gaps. That's a sign that the car's had prior accident damage. So, what is the Getz like to drive? Well, it's not a bad little car to drive. The steering's really nice and positive. Suspension's relatively compliant. It's a little bouncy at times. And the ride and handling compromise is not a very bad compromise at all, especially for a car that was 14 grand back in the day in 2007. For a cheap car, the handling and ride compromise is very good. What isn't so good is the NVH. The NVH is quite ordinary to say the least, and at higher speeds, it can be a bit of an annoyance. But all round visibility is good, and especially on a day like today, typical Melbourne June day, pissing with rain. Visibility is great all round. One of the annoying points about the kits, it does like to mist up a bit on a day like today, which means you're gonna have the demist on. But apart from that, visibility is actually very good in these conditions, which is a positive thing in Victoria it rains a lot like this. One thing you have to realise is the NVH in this car is really booming. 100 k's an hour, 3000 RPM in fifth gear. It is quite boomy, it is quite noisy. Of course, it's a cheap car. You shouldn't expect much, but Compared to some of the others I've driven, such as the Micra, at 100 k's, this thing is not as well suited as that. It's more of a short commute car, not really something you drive on a long journey. Another thing I don't like is this seat. This seat is a bit uncomfortable. It's not really made for size 
14 six foot individuals like me so the driving position seat and pedals aren't perfect at all they really don't suit me that well but if you're someone relatively short it's not a bad car to drive if you're tall well the Nissan Micra the Suzuki Swift and the Fiat Panda and the Renault Clio are much Renault Clio are much better cars if you're my size. But it's not the worst defender. At least I can get away with driving this car, unlike some of the others. But the thing that can be said about the Getz is while it is a cheap car, undoubtedly when you sit in here, you look at all the plastics, all the hard touch, scratchy, itchy and scratchy plastics. While it's a cheap car, it's not a bad car. Like, remember the Lantra that I drove four years ago with an auto box, mind you, wasn't the best car in the world. But this car, it shows that even at that time, Hyundai had started getting the hang of building relatively solid, good quality cars that aren't too bad to drive and are reasonably reliable and are quite cheap to fix. Everything on this car is cheap. Everything on this car is made for you to be able to run it you could buy a Getz, five grand like this one, and you've got a car that will last you four or five years, and if anything happens, it's cheap to find parts, and many of them out there. It really is a good car if you're on a budget. It's a great budget car. All the buttons, all the switches, they're not badly put together. They have a reasonably quality feel. Okay, the steering wheel is this sort of rubbery feeling object, but all the switch gear, it doesn't feel like it's insignificant, it feels relatively solid. You can see why Hyundai sold so many of these cars, especially when you throw in a 5 year unlimited kilometre warranty, a Getz 1.4 S like this back in 2007 was $14,490 in this specification here, and that is a 5 door with a manual gearbox. Now they were running these things between 14.9 and 13.9. So when this was delivered in November 07, it was 14.490, if memory serves me correctly, with the ads I had on at the time. Because I was selling the three door and a deal at 13.490, originally 13.990. So for a car that's 15 grand with a long warranty, that was cheap to buy, cheap to run, cheap to insure. It's a great little car. So what to pay for for a Getz? Well, under $3,000, you're looking for a manual hatchback with 200 odd thousand kilometers, an early 2002, 2005 car. Up to four grand buys you another manual in the five doors. So that will buy you cars up to about 2007, like our car. And again, we're talking high hundreds. So between 180 and 250 on the clock. Five grand is where you'll be looking at Getz as for automatics you'll start seeing them turn up here between four and five but again they've got high k's on them and they tend to be three doors manuals 5k gets you a car that's around 2008 2009 with 150,000 k's and under five thousand dollars between three and five grand a manual gets makes a lot of financial sense because it's a cheap car to buy it's cheap to run cheap to insure it's reliable it doesn't cost a lot to keep in terms of fuel economy in terms of fuel costs and fuel economy and also the car is relatively easy to fix. So if something does happen, it's pretty simple to sort out. Above five grand, you're starting to get a lot more automatic. So you'll get automatics between five and seven. So these will be 07 to 09 Getzes, 1.4s, 1.6s. And again, these are relatively high K cars. So cars with over 100,000 kilometers would turn up here, but not that often. You're mostly looking at the 150 to 200. And then seven to nine is the cars that low hundreds and cars under 100,000 Ks, automatic. These cars don't make that much financial sense to me because you're spending a lot of money on a car that, while it's not a bad car, there are better cars for that sort of money. So in my eyes, this TB gets is Hyundai's modern day version of their beloved Excel model. Now, I say that because it offered everything the Excel offered. Cheap car, low running costs, good fuel economy. 
relatively reasonable interior space, long warranty, and the ease of finding parts that you could buy them from your local Repco or Super Cheap Auto because there's so many of them and the parts are so easy to reproduce. And that's what this thing does. It is a more modern version of the X3 XL, albeit with more safety features and more anti-theft features. But the same premise applies. Cheap car, cheap running costs, surprisingly fun to drive in a manual, and the sort of car that, if anything does happen to it, it's crucially not that hard to rectify. The guest was available as a three and five door hatchback, powered by 1.3 and 1.5 litre engines from 2000 to 2005, and 1.4, 1.6 litre engines from 2006 to 2010. Getzes were built between 02 to 10. Although there are cars registered in 2011, Hyundai Australia ordered a big batch of cars like they did with the XL, and there are a lot of 2011 registered Getzes floating around, but again, they're all late 2010 builds. So the one to buy in this lot, for, in my eyes, would be a 1.4, 1.6, under five grand, manual transmission, under 200,000 Ks, three or five door, depending on what you want. Although the base 1.4s lack anti-lock brakes. So at 5K, I'd be thinking a 1.6, about 2007 to 2008, or maybe even an 09, between 150 and 200,000 Ks, manual gearbox, decent shape with full service history. That'd be the car I'd choose to get in this price point.